These are dark times, John. Not that dark. Shh. It's the film flavors. Hey, everybody. I'm Robert. And I'm Chris. And we're the film flamers. A couple of you guys reached out to us on social media um, recently and said, hey, we're all stuck inside due to all this, um, you know, social distancing and shelter in place. And um, give us some suggestions on what we should be streaming at home. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for trusting our opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope they do. They listen to our podcast. <laughs> That's right. So um, we decided to take you guys up on your offer and we have created a couple couple lists of things that you can stream at home during this um, time of need. Yes, and we have divided and conquered because Robert has taken care of your movies list and I have taken care of your TV shows list. Yep, Chris's mutant power is being able to binge and stream an entire season of a TV show in an amount of time that I just find completely unfathomable every single time. He's like, oh, I just watched this season and it's like 12 episodes long and he seems to have done it in like a day. That's because I don't sleep. Well, I guess that's right. And I sleep a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so guys, again, uh, I want to start by saying that for future listeners, hey, future listeners, these movies and TV shows are streaming on the streaming networks and services at the time of this recording. So we're talking about March and April of 2020. So um, if you go looking for them later on, they may or may not be there. So, mm -hmm. But uh, fortunately, you can just Google the title of something and it'll tell you everywhere that you can watch it. Yeah, so, it should be good for a couple months at least. Yeah, for sure. At least for right now, too. So, All right. So uh, you want me to go first with the movies? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so originally I wanted to do like five and five, right? Do five underseen or underrated horror movies that you could stream right now, and then maybe like five comfort movies. And um, my list of underrated horror was growing too large, so I decided just to stick to that. So I'm going to bring you guys 10 underrated horror gems that you can stream right now. And uh, these are in no particular order, so they're not ranked by my favorites or anything like that. And I've tried to keep everything to like the big three. So Amazon on Prime, Netflix, and for horror fans, Shudder. Okay? So the first movie I wanted to talk about is the movie called Braid from 2019, directed by Mitzi Pirion, and it's streaming right now on Amazon Prime Video. It's got a Rotten Tomato score of 86%. So... I have uh, talked about this movie before on our podcast. It made my top 10 horror movies list of last year. And I think I mentioned it on a really early episode of Shooting the Flames. But uh, so this movie is about two wanted women uh, who decide to steal from a wealthy and mentally unstable friend of theirs who lives in a fantasy world. To get her money, the fugitive must take part in a deadly and perverse game of make-believe in a sprawling yet decaying estate. So, um, this is the one about torturing lesbians, right? Yeah. I mean, there's some lesbian -y moments in it. And like the game, when they say perverse, is super perverse. There's lots of like, you know, violence against each other and things like that. Like, this movie is crazy. It's hallucinatory at times and incredibly violent. <clears throat> it shocked me sometimes in the places that it went. But I mean, this is like women in horror at its finest, right? So the, the writer director is a woman and the three main cast members are women. And there's some really, really good ones. So the performance by Madeline Brewer, and you might know her from a movie called Cam, which I think is also showing on Netflix right now. Um, and Imogene Waterhouse, whom I've never even heard of before I saw this movie, just give you know really, really great performances. And I have been trying to get Chris to watch this movie for like a fucking year now <laughs> yeah i just i watched the trailer and i was just like yeah yeah i mean i talked about it for a very long time after i watched it <laughs> so um after this mention i'm just gonna give it a rest you know what i mean so <laughs> but it's good i mean i it's really really good and uh, it's on an amazon prime video amazon prime video for free okay oh nice so uh the next one i wanted to talk about is a movie called revenge from 2018 it's directed by Coraline Fariat. Uh, it's on Shudder. Um, and for those of you who don't have Shudder and you're horror fans, um, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice, in my opinion. I think that this uh, service has a ton of options. And they um, <clears throat> sort of like 
put everything together in different categories for you to choose from. So you're like, ah, I don't know what I want to watch, but I kind of want to watch a movie about, you know, wilderness horror or something. They have that, you know, they'll give you suggestions for it. And here lately, they've started to do their own like original content, things like the uh, Creepshow TV series is on Shudder, right? Mm-hmm. And they oftentimes will give you like a free month if you have a code. So go to their social media and see if they've got that offered. I know for those of you listening to this episode, when it first comes out, they do have that. They're doing it for the, um, you know, the self isolation period. I think the code is shut in. <laughs> so anyway, revenge is a shutter original. So they, they bought this movie and you can see it for free on shutter. You can rent it other places, but it's free here. It's got a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, It's sort of about uh, a woman is sort of enjoying a romantic getaway with her wealthy boyfriend until his two sleazy friends arrive for an unannounced hunting trip. As tension mounts in the house, the situation abruptly and viciously intensifies, culminating in a shocking act that leaves Jen brutalized and left for dead. Um, This movie is most assuredly not for everyone. I got Chris to watch it with me after I fell in love with it after a couple of viewings. Um, it's really, really violent. It's shocking and at times completely unbelievable. Um, and it plays around with genre tropes. And I like that a lot. Um, and I find myself enthralled with it every time I watch the movie. Uh, I have a hard time recommending rape revenge movies a lot of the time, but I think that this one sort of stands out amongst that subgenre. It really does. And it was filmed just really, really well. And it doesn't really take itself too seriously, I want to say, Mm-mm. but it's, it really is worth it. And it's, it's all, it's really over the top. It gets like, um, surreal. Yeah. But yeah. So this is one I can recommend as well. I mean, and it's like, it's both in English and in French, you know? And so I sort of like that sort of thing and you could see some penis in it. And I like that sort of thing, you know? <laughs> so I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, this movie is just really, really, really good. And the the main character, the main actor in it, her name is Matilda Anna Ingrid Lutz. And I just like saying her name. <laughs> so, And she's just, she's amazing in this movie. I, I really, really dug revenge. She did so. a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Go check that one out for sure. Uh, so next up uh, is a movie called Sweetheart, and this is from last year. It's 2019. It's directed by Justin Dillard, and you can stream this one on Netflix. It's holding a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. A shipwreck survivor on an uninhabited island must fend off a malevolent force that surfaces each night. Um, I watched this movie... Right at the end of 2019. And, you know, they sort of had teased a theatrical release for it um, in the summertime. <clears throat> and it played near my home, but I mean, it was there for like a week and then it was gone. And sort of found a home on VOD and eventually on Netflix where I watched it. And it really, really surprised me. So um, I say this on the podcast all the time that I have an affinity for horror movies that have a very small cast and a very small setting, you know, very <clears throat> like one or two locations, if not just one location. And this movie doesn't disappoint in that. And half the movie is silent because she's the only character on an island by herself. But uh, there's a really, really cool monster in the movie, in my opinion. And the story moves very, very fast. And it's just a really, really easy and fun watch. And the actress in that movie also gives a fantastic performance. Her name is Kiersey Clemens. It's, um, it's just a really surprising movie that I don't think that most people have seen or maybe even heard of. So go give that one a shot. So next up on my list is a little movie called Lake Mungo. It's from 2009. It's directed by Joel Anderson and it's on Amazon Prime Video and it holds a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes currently. Um, it's all about a 16 year old who drowns while swimming in a local reservoir Her body's recovered, and they say it was an accidental death, but her family is grieving, and they start to experience a whole bunch of strange events in their home. And they seek the help of a psychic and a parapsychologist to help unravel the clues of Alice's, like, secret life. Right? Mm. Um, Brock from Cocktail Party Massacre recommended this movie way back in the early days of our podcast. So I was super late to the game watching this one, but it's so fucking good. Like this movie is told in sort of a mockumentary style. Right. And I, I like documentaries too. And so it's sort of like 
got me in just from that. But the movie takes a lot of twists and turns and it's surprisingly scary. But it like, it really satisfies on a lot of levels, at least for me. Like it sort of plays off like a true crime documentary. It's also a ghost story. It's a thriller. It's a mystery. And like I said, surprisingly scary. So this is certainly one to check out. But I super recommend this one. It's a fantastic, fantastic movie. Uh, next up is a movie from Shudder. It's a Shudder original, and it's called Terrified from 2018. This is a Spanish language movie, so it's uh, from Argentina. But not to be confused with Terrifier. No, yes, not to be confused with Terrifier, which I would never put on a list. I did not care for that fucking movie. Yes. First of all, there's a fucking clown in it, and I'm not doing that. This movie is called Terrified. Yeah, so. Terrified. So um, it is currently holding a 77% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like I said, it's a Shutter original. So it's all about a group of paranormal researchers who is investigating a series of strange events in this one neighborhood in Buenos Aires. So like each house is having its own little disturbance. And it's sort of told in like an anthology form, right? And it culminates together toward the end. And this movie fucking scares the shit out of me. Like, terrifies me. And I think their name is Apropos because, I don't know. I, I read a lot of things about it online and people seem to like it and say it was scary. I looked up a couple images and the images were frightening to me. And then so one night for one of my 31 and 31s, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to watch this movie. And I had to take so many breaks while I was watching it. I had to get up and smoke a cigarette or like, you know what, I think I need another beer. That took me 15 <laughs> minutes to get from the kitchen. And I mean, it's just a really, really scary movie. And I do get scared easily, right? I mean, like, if you don't believe me, just ask Chris what it's like to walk through a haunted attraction with me around Halloween. Mm. <laughs> so I like, I will hurt myself for sure. But this movie is terrifying. Um, I wanted to make sure that it still scared me upon a second watch. Cause after I watched it the first time, I was like, nope, this is a one time watch only. I'm not, I'm not doing that again, but I turned it on while I was making this list and I made it through about half an hour of it. And I was just like, no, I'm turning this off. <laughs> so <laughs> Ooh, you're gonna have to do that. It's frightening. You should really watch it. Okay. Uh, next up is a movie called I am the pretty thing that lives in the house. It's from 2016, and it's directed by Oz Perkins. This one's streaming on Netflix, and it's holding a 58% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I mm. thought that it was higher than that, but I you know, couldn't remember. Um, it's about a woman who's hired to care for a reclusive elderly horror novelist in her home, and she starts to suspect that the house is haunted, right? Uh, for those of you who are on our Patreon, you know that I recently gave a not-so-good review of Oz Perkins' Gretel and Hansel. Um, and Chris was asking about some of his other movies and reminded me of this one. I totally forgot that I had seen it. And then I started thinking about it recently and I was like, I remember that to be very, very good. And, you know, based on Gretel and Hansel on this one, I think it's safe to say that Oz Perkins is the fan of a slow burn horror. And this movie certainly is that like it really takes a while to get started and it's very very slow but there's a lot of creepy imagery and it's just really beautiful to look at and i think that this director takes a lot of time to make sure that his movies look good you know they may not be for everybody just because of the pacing but like he he knows how to you know set a scene mm -hmm. we'll say um he has another movie streaming on netflix called the black coat's daughter and i had not seen that but i watched it last night at the time of this recording, and it was also very good. So I'm thinking I need to give Gretel and Hansel another watch. Maybe it was just situational that time. <clears throat> but in the meantime, guys, since you can't see Gretel and Hansel yet, go watch I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House on Netflix. Was the, um, what was it, Black Coat's Daughter? Yeah. I heard that's very triggering. Um, It was surprisingly violent like i i didn't expect it to to be as violent as it was and it's sort of like in your face and it comes out of nowhere but it's a really interesting story and it has emma roberts in it and i tend to like her mm -hmm. when i see her in things so and it has that actress from sabrina the teenage witch huh. not okay. melissa joan hart but the new one you know it was good yeah okay so next up is a movie that i know that i've talked before on the podcast I covered this one when we did our top 10 horror comedies last year at this um, last April. So a full year ago. Um, and it's a movie called housebound from 2014. It's directed by Gerald Johnstone. This is another, this is another Australian movie, but this is a horror comedy. So it's a little different. You can find this one on Tubi 
And uh, you can also watch the full movie on YouTube. So I have never seen or heard of Tubi. I hadn't either. I know that when I was um, so originally when I watched this movie the first time, it was streaming on Netflix. And so this just goes to show you that how quickly sometimes these things can, can leave. So if there's something on your list that you want to watch, watch it because you never know when they're going to pull that shit. Mm. But you know, so when I rewatched it for the uh, last top 10 that we did for that horror comedies, I watched it on YouTube. So I know it's it's still there. I checked. Um, it holds a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, so I'm pretty proud about that. Um, it's about a would-be thief who's remanded to the custody of her estranged mother, who turns out to be correct in her assertion that evil spirits are afoot in their family domicile. Like I said, it made it into my top 10 horror comedies, and it cracks me up every single time I watch it. It has moments that are the same, at the same time, very scary, laugh out loud, funny, and there's a couple really brilliant comedic performances in this movie from Morgana O'Reilly, and especially Rima T. T Watita. I can't even say her name appropriately. I think I had a hard time the last time I was talking about it, but I mean, like, she's just fucking hysterical in this movie. And out of everything on my list, I think that this is the perfect one to watch, that if you want to stay within your shows and genre and watch a horror movie, but you don't want to see something that's so heavy, you know, or with a lot of death, right? Like, this is just a really great, very funny horror comedy. So definitely go check that out, either on Netflix or Tubi. And I think I need to look up what Tubi is. Yeah. And a little on the nose, too, with the title of Housebound. Oh, yeah. I didn't even fucking think about that. <laughs> So maybe, maybe you don't want to watch Housebound while you're Housebound, but I mean, I promise that you will come away just like laughing your fucking ass off. It's so, so funny. All right. So we got three more to go on my list. And the next one is a movie called Willow Creek from 2013, directed by Bobcat Goldthwait, of all people. So he's from like the Police Academy movies, right? Um, this one's playing on Amazon Prime Video. <clears throat> it holds the 81% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's about a man and his girlfriend who are camping in the woods, trying to capture firsthand evidence of Bigfoot. So they're going to Willow Creek, where that infamous like video we've all seen of Bigfoot walking around mm -hmm. you know, is, right? Um, this movie is found footage, which um, isn't always quite good. I think a lot of people have really lost hope in that particular subgenre of horror. But I really liked this one. Um, it has all the trappings of a Blair Witch style story. You know, a couple goes into the woods with a video camera to find Bigfoot and bad things happen. Um, but for all the familiarity of it, Willow Creek surprised me. You know, I found myself very, very scared in parts of it and screaming at the TV because all the stupid fucking decisions these people were making. <laughs> and like, there's some dark humor along the way. And I would assume that, you know, because that's who Bobcat Goldthwait is. And um, the two lead actors, uh, Alexi Gilmore and Bryce Johnson, who looks just just as fucking hot as he did on the TV show popular a couple years ago, have really good chemistry in this movie. And, you know, it sort of takes its time delivering some of the most horrific moments. Like they're not all shoved in your face back to back to back. It sort of lulls you into this like false sense of security and then like throws things in your face. Right. So it's like totally, totally worth a watch. Hmm. Um, next up is a movie called the autopsy of Jane Doe. It's from 2016, directed by Andre Overdahl. It's uh, playing on Netflix right now, and it's got an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it's about a father and son team of coroners who are performing the autopsy of a, a young female victim, and they start to experience a series of increasingly bizarre events while uncovering clues to her death. So remember when I said that I like small casts and limited locations in horror movies? And this is no exception. So this is like two characters in a morgue. <laughs> performing an autopsy right and i suppose that you know the the corpse on the slab is a character as well. well i've heard from so many people that this is good including other podcasts so it's fantastic there's just so much fucking atmosphere in this movie i mean like for real it's just amazing and there's a lot of creepy moments you know like everyone's heard stories about tying bells to the corpse's feet or toes to make sure they're dead right you know so some shit like that pops up and i mean it's a very, very puzzling story, too, because it's also a mystery. They're trying to unravel why this woman is dead and try to figure out, like, what's going on around them. And there's some really, really good acting going on. Brian Cox and Emile Hirsch and especially Owen Kelly, who plays uh, Jane Doe in the movie. I mean, it's just one of the really, in my opinion, one of the best horror movies of the last decade, if not, you know, of the last 20 years since oh, the wow. millennium started. Like, I really, really like this movie. And... um. 
out of everything on the list, like this is something that I would like to deep dive into for a future episode. Oh, yeah. you know, I think there's a lot to talk about in this particular movie and it's just so, so good. So go give it a watch. So uh, while I said I didn't rank these movies earlier, you know, and that's, you know, sort of true, but I have seen a movie in the last couple of years that I just really, really latched on to. And I think a lot of it is because it's a holiday horror movie. <laughs> and those are just some of my favorite things to watch. Um, but this movie is called Better Watch Out. It's from 2017. It's dressed, directed by Chris Peckover. Um, it's on Shutter right now, and it has an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it's sort of about a babysitter who agrees to babysit a 12 year old while his parents go to this holiday party and she has to defend herself and the boy when unwelcome intruders announce their arrival. Um, so even my, even though the last few months have seemed like an eternity, we are nowhere near Christmas and that should not stop you from watching this movie anyway. It's okay. You don't have to like put up your Christmas tree or Christmas lights to enjoy holiday horror. You can watch it year round, <laughs> but the thing is, like we just said that I want to talk so much about the autopsy of Jane Doe. This is one of those movies, like the, the less you talk about it, the better. Like no spoilers here. We can never do an episode on this particular movie because like I just I will spoil the shit out of tons of things. But this is not one of them. Yeah, it's one of those movies that just takes a sharp left turn and you just it just is a completely different thing that you thought it was. Yeah. It's and in my opinion, it is fantastic. So this is another movie that I got Chris to watch after I watched it a couple times. Did we watch it at Christmas time, or did we just watch it randomly? I don't I can't know uh, something, but I I loved it so much, and then I also watched um, the Babysitter. Yeah, after that, and I really loved the Babysitter, and that was really close to making my list too. So I mean, like two different movies, obviously. But Better Watch Out just has so many different twists and turns in it, and it's such a satisfying horror movie to me. The performances in it are great. It's a really, really great, well-made movie and just carefully thought out plot. And so so really go check that out. Like if I were going to recommend anything on this list, Better Watch Out and The Autopsy of Jane Doe are the first two that you should look out for on streaming services right now. Um, I had a couple of runners up. Uh, one of them is the Into the Dark series on Hulu. So this is uh, Blumhouse has movies that they release once a month. So, I mean, every month they release a new movie and it sort of like focuses on um, the holiday that's in that particular month. Right. These have been going for a little over a year. So we have a couple of movies about Valentine's Day and a couple of Christmas ones. And some of them are hit or miss, you know, like the really, really good ones are really, really good. And then some of the shitty ones are really, really shitty. But I mean, it's if you're going to sit down and watch something if you're someone like me who enjoys holiday horror, it doesn't matter what the holiday is. It's super easy to pick and choose the ones that you want to watch. And there's a lot of big names in here too. So it's a, it's a good thing. Also, I didn't pick anything from Hulu, so I felt I needed to throw something in <laughs> just in case. <laughs> um, and finally, there is a movie that I watched a couple years ago on Amazon prime video. It's called the night eats the world. And um, it's a really, really fresh take on the zombie apocalypse in Paris. And, um, of another very small cast, like a cast of one. And it's um, really surprising. Very, very good. And I, I really wanted to put it in, but I was trying to limit everything to 10. But then I forgot, you know, we can do runners up. Now, do you have some like old favorites that you can, you know, because this, this is a lot of new stuff. And sometimes people just want to go back to what they know or might have seen or might have forgotten about. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because, like I said earlier, I was trying to do like five underrated horror movies and then five like comfort movies or whatever. And I really thought that the underrated one was the best way to go. But there are a couple movies that I always go to either when I'm bored and have nothing to watch or I'm just not feeling super happy or, you know, I just need to escape for a little bit and watch something that's comforting and familiar. And one of those movies is Return of the Living Dead. And that is playing right now on Amazon Prime Video. Yay. directed by dan o'bannon it's really funny to me and just clever and an enjoyable movie yep. every time i watch mm-hmm. it i fall asleep to this movie sometimes <laughs> so. and i think the original running zombie that's right we just talked about that in one of the dawn of the deads right um and then the other one is clue and this is just a movie that i've loved ever since i was a little wee robert and have watched it so many times. I know all the fucking dialogue. 
Like I could sit down and just quote this movie from start to finish, but I always laugh at it. Like, even though I know the jokes are coming, they never fail to be funny to me. (laughs) So, and that's also playing on Amazon prime video right now. And that's it. So there's a, that's a good 10, 11, 12, 13, plus all the end of the dark movies. That's a lot of movies. If you're looking for something like that to watch, but we know a lot of you like to watch TV series And so Chris has got all that for you. Yeah. So my list is going to be way less original (laughs) than yours. Uh, But those are a lot of great picks. And I'm probably going to be referencing your list a lot in the coming weeks because I've got a long like five weeks ahead of me, at least in quarantine. Oh my God. So, well, when you do, I need to know when you watch them. And in fact, we should do like some sort of watch party. Can't they do that now? Or we could at the very least like text each other while watching some of these movies or TV shows. Oh, yeah, right? of course. So the, the shows that I chose, I really wanted to be kind of transportive, right? So I want to kind of take people out of their environment that they're stuck in their house. I want, you know, with very, very few exceptions. Right. Um, and I also wanted to give people really immersive, like uh, either franchises or universes that they can explore and kind of spend a lot of time with and get really intimate, you know, cause it's, it's really hard if you've got a bunch of shows that are like one season so far, or just two seasons or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then you're like off to the next one, off to the next one, or you're mixing movies in and things like that. Now that's a lot of movies uh, that Robert just, you know, put on the list in addition to whatever you're already watching, whatever you already plan to watch, whatever series is going on. But what I'm trying to do is give you series in order of like length and depth, you know, and then kind of give you some special mentions that may or not, may not be just like one season, things like that. So my, I'm starting at the top just from length. This is not in any particular order of like what the best series is, but this is a little bit horror adjacent. So my first pick is actually the X files. So a lot of uh, probably younger listeners probably have not revisited or visited the X-Files before. And it is nine seasons long and including two new seasons. So that's 11 seasons total, I believe, along with two movies. So you can spend a lot of time with this. And this is a classic series and it still holds up. Still looks good. The first season is pretty little dated as far as the look of it, um, but it's still very cinematic. And Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny are just iconic in these roles. And um, it's been kind of copied before. And like I said, there's two seasons that literally just kind of just came out as a revital uh, re- revitalization or just like a reboot revisitation of the series. And it, I thought it was pretty good. So the meat of the series is probably seasons like one through four. And then it kind of really digs down into like the mythology as you go through and there's some new cast, but it's really good. And it's streaming on Hulu and YouTube TV. And I think that if you have not seen X-Files, it's part of pop culture mythology. I mean, like it's, it's everywhere. So uh, you'll be able to talk about it with your, you know, your friends that have seen it or family um, for years and years and years to come. There's just a lot of gold to mine here. So that's why I included that just because it has a huge, huge breadth. You know, there really is. I mean, like, and one of the great things about that show, as far as like horror fans go, is that like you'll have a couple sci-fi twinged episodes, and then they'll they'll give you something that's completely horrific, oh, straight yeah. up horror. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so what was that one episode that they banned from TV or whatever? I Home is that what it's called? I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But it's like lore at this point. Yeah, I th- that one might have been about like a child predator. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure which one, but yeah. And they got away with a lot of interesting things, but it's all good. You know, some of it's very adult. Some of it's not so much. It kind of runs the gamut. There's some disgusting and horrific, scary things in there, but there's also some like really interesting sci-fi stuff, you know? And I had the biggest crush on David Duchovny when I was little. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, who didn't? Teenager. I mean, yeah, everyone did, I assume. So my next is actually combined is the Buffy and Angel universe. Right. Yeah. So that's seven seasons of Buffy and five seasons of Angel, which is basically 12 seasons of the Buffy verse that you can get. And it's all on Hulu right now. And so I would highly, highly recommend this if you haven't seen it or even just to revisit it if you haven't seen it in a couple of years. And some of you may have watched all of Buffy, but not all of Angel, like 
my wonderful co-host. That's true. And there's just a lot of great stuff in Angel. I, I'll rewatch Angel just as much as Buffy. It's just as good in some places. So if you have not, you know, witnessed the greatness that is Buffy and Angel, please do yourself a favor. My God. So good. Yeah, I cannot second that enough. I know that like Chris and I we don't disagree very often on things, right? But there are some things that we both truly love. And Buffy the Vampire Slayer is just one of those. Yeah. I think we both really, really think very highly of that show. Way more than a lot of people do. I don't know. It's got a pretty rabid fan base. So. Yeah, it does. But I think that, you know, this is the show that, you know, these are shows that were in the 90s, 2000s. And we can think of that as just yesterday to us. But it's not for a lot of our younger listeners who were born as these things were kind of going off the air, kind of in mid mm-hmm. mid throw, you know. But they're still high quality. Angel was shot in widescreen versus Buffy was the old square, you know. But um, they they both look great. Um, they're both timeless and witty as hell, and and of course always funny. I think I'm only missing the last two seasons of Angel, so I could easily knock that out, you know, yeah, while you staying go. socially distant. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Okay. All right. I'll do it. I'm going to do it. Awesome. So then I've got Highlander, the series, which is definitely horror adjacent, but there are definitely some horror episodes. In fact, I remember kind of a Silence of the Lambsy kind of episode. Ooh. And almost every episode ends with someone cutting another person's head off. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> like literally, and every time you cut someone's an immortal's head off, there's a huge lightning show and they have to blow up a building. So this, this, <laughs> this is incredibly, I, I'm guessing, had to be expensive um you know expensive show to make because it's all over the world and all these flashbacks from all these different places it's very very transportive in that way so like you know you'll see flashbacks of him like in japan or in scotland you know or in other places all over the world and it's just uh it's really interesting it's you know there's always there's so much gold to mine there for them they can do anything basically they want they can just make up a whole point of his life that he didn't have before you know that you didn't know about and um yeah, basically, if you don't know, um, Highlander is just about an immortal that, or immortals, I should say, that are in quote unquote the game, I guess. And basically, Last Man Standing wins quote unquote the prize, right? So it's kind of all these immortals are kind of bumping into each other, trying to kill each other. And, you know, there's a whole mythology to that. There's, there's immortals that have been around for thousands of years some just a hundred, a couple hundred years, some that are brand new. And so it's a, it's really interesting. There's six seasons and there's actually five semi related movies. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, of mythology there and at least two of those movies are good. The first one's a classic. <laughs> and I think at least five out of six of those seasons is pretty good. Um, I've seen the first movie, but there's a reason why it's a huge franchise, but a lot of people just haven't seen this and I have never revisited it and I plan to, and I've always planned to. So Maybe this is my time, but there's a lot of a lot of good stuff there. So check it out. So when we were in Paris last September and we were taking the Seine River cruise, right? And we had to get onto the boat and we sat there for a long time. And there was a houseboat like directly across from us across the river. Yeah. And my husband kept looking at it and he was he and I was just like, What are you looking at? And he was like, That's the fucking boat from Highlander. And I was just like, I don't know what you're talking about oh so. my god yeah because like he's in this beautiful freaking like large house somewhere and it's a french canadian production right and so like the main okay. actress in there is like is like from quebec and you know he's un, like basically an implacable accent and um i think from season like two or three onward he's in paris just in a houseboat on the seine which is amazing right and I think at one point, one finale, they're actually like on the Eiffel Tower or something, and there's all this lightning going on after he chops off a head. So, well, that houseboat is still right there on the Seine, apparently where they re- like recorded it or maybe did some external shots or whatever. But so here we are in Paris, and I'm like, oh, I want to see this, and I've got to see that. And then at least my husband got to cross a little something off his list because he saw the houseboat from Highlander. <laughs> no, I'm, it's like, really I'm cool. sure he took a picture of it. And there's just know. something cool about seeing like sword fights all the time, and different people have different kinds of swords, like katanas versus like big gigantic broadswords and stuff. So it's really cool. Don't you have like a Highlander esque sword in your collection? I, yeah, I have the McLeod sword. I believe your husband has it now. Yeah, because he was trying to explain to me. <laughs> and I was, you know. Well, if you haven't seen the original movie, uh, definitely see that first because the the I think the uh, pilot for the series has that 
version of the Highlander kind of kick off the series Wasn't with a new actor for it. So they both exist Sean in the Connery same universe. Sean Connery in it or something like Sean that? Sean Connery's in yeah. it, but yeah. he's not. No, it's uh, it's really good. Anyway, if you've not, not seen the Highlander, I'm disappointed in you, but I'm telling everyone else <laughs> I'm not disappointed in you. Go watch it. So my next series is, of course, The Expanse with four seasons on Amazon Prime as they have taken it over from sci-fi and the latest season is actually produced by Amazon Prime. So I've talked about it as the Cthulian levels of horror. It's it's the most realistic science in sci-fi and they the ways they use that is amazing. But also just the the levels of like I mean the original book that this was based off is called Leviathan Wakes, right? It's like Game of Thrones meets um Battlestar Galactica. And if you like one of those you're going to like this. So it's uh, got some heavy exposition in the front of it, but you definitely need to check it out. Robert's already promised he's going to watch it. He's just, you know. Yeah. So he sent me a, like a, a clip show, like YouTube video of this actress that I like very, very much. I cannot say her name. I will butcher it. So, but she's, she's so good. She's such a good actress. And he was just like, you need to watch this show. Like, here's, here's how she acts. And she like cusses like a sailor. And so like, we were just watching it. My husband and I were watching that little clip show and I was just like, okay, I'm on board with this. <laughs> I mean, like, just for that alone. Yeah. She plays like she's in the government. And so, you know, she's just not what you'd expect as like a statesman. Right. You know, she's just like dealing with other world leaders, you know, literal world leaders in this case and um you know they're like feed her a line or whatever just like cut the bullshit yeah (laughs) i mean she's such a good actress so yeah i mean tell me what you fucking mean (laughs) you know it's just great it's definitely on our list yeah and then you get to see some shit that you've just never seen before which is amazing for you know uh all the effects and, and the production value that they can do. It's just amazing. So definitely it's one of the most underrated or underseen shows at this point, I think uh, for how, just how good it is. It's got like a hundred percent of rotten tomatoes across the board. It's amazing. But anyway, my next pick is actually twin peaks. And I think this is criminally underseen and this is on Netflix. And there were two original seasons, including one, uh, one reboot, one revival with the same actors. And of course, one movie, which was fire walk with me. Nice. And I believe that was one of the first, what was that? The first movie you ever saw alone in the theater? No, it was one of the first. So I loved twin peaks when I was younger and I begged and begged my mom who did not watch the show to take me to see fire walk with me. So it was, you know, one of the first R rated movies that she took me to when I was younger so and she had to sit through that movie and i don't think she's ever forgiven me for it because <laughs> it is not something twin peaks is not the kind of show that she wants to watch obviously she didn't when i was younger i watched it by myself and we were sitting here in this movie and she's probably thinking to herself like who the fuck did i raise you know but my god i love twin peaks well it's just it's there's nothing really like it right it's just so dark and disturbing and yet also so quirky and funny and weird and uh-huh. you know yes. and uh there's yeah i mean it's just it's got an atmosphere all its own i love i love listening to the the intro music for every <laughs> every episode it's it's just such a good show so if, if you guys haven't seen i'm sure everyone's heard of it but the almost no one's seen it so it's on netflix so watch twin peaks i think you'll enjoy it so did you watch the recent showtime series they put out no yeah, I haven't either yet. I'm scared to actually. You know, Matt said it was good. So okay, I mean, I will watch it eventually. But Twin Peaks is just so so fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> love it. It's such a good show. So my next one is my weirdest choice, and that is the original Beauty and the Beast television show from 1987, starring Linda <laughs> Hamilton and Ron Perlman, horror icons. Yes, <laughs> and that is streaming on CBS All Access. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> I, I just came across it randomly the other night. I was like, I forgot this was even a show. Like, <laughs> oh my god, that show was it's good. So old, like it's <laughs> from 1987, and I was like, oh my god, this is going to be like an embarrassment of riches. And I went to Rotten Tomatoes, and literally, it's too old to have a score. Like, no one's revisited it. <laughs> Everyone's forgotten it. But it's like Linda Hamilton, Ron Perlman. I mean, like these are like horror giants, you know. Linda Hamilton, of course, from Terminator series, etc. 
and mm -hmm. Ron Perlman, of course, from like Hellboy and God, a billion others um, At all. that he's been in. But like I watched, I just was like for shiggles. I <laughs> I watched the fir the pilot. Oh my God. Like it's so cinematic and it's so eighties, so dark mm -hmm. horror movie eighties. And the sets are amazing. Uh, way ahead of its time. The music is a completely like orchestral and, and like really well done. Like I was just like, holy shit, this was so ahead of its time. Like, and it's so melodramatic. And like, I, I don't know what I, whether I wanted to like roll my eyes or swoon. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't know what to do with my emotions. I was just like, I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't know where to put my emotions watching this thing. But I, I'm going to definitely pick it back up and watch it because I just barely remember it from watching it as a kid. I remember watching the pilot as a kid back in 1987. I don't know how I remember that, but I remember being like completely enraptured by it. And I just have memories and like glimpses of what happened in that show and just being completely just like taken by it. And I just don't know why I never kind of went back and, and picked it up, but it's there for streaming. So check it out. It's definitely worth seeing the pilot at the very least. I have not thought about this show in for fucking ever, but I remember watching it when I was younger because anything I could get my hands on that was remotely horror adjacent, I would. And just like the makeup, Ron, Perl Ron Perlman's makeup in that show drew me to it. it was really yeah, good. I'm like, I used to love that show. I'm so happy. Yay. You gave <laughs> this hair looks like like a 80s rocker. And I'm just like anything but the hair. But the costumes are so like iconic. Yes. Like he's got this like hooded robe on and they've got like the mist going through through like the light coming down into the sewer tunnels and stuff. It's like a really new take on beauty and the beast. It takes place in New York in 1987. It's such a good show. And like he and his father, like below in the underworld and the sewers, where this whole network of like civilization is apparently. And like, she's like an assistant district attorney after she gets her face slashed up. It's like crazy. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I was just like, Holy crap. So I'm super excited. I want to watch that again. Yeah. And it's got like a legends of the fall score, you know, <laughs> it's like crazy. I was like, I was like, Oh my God. So yeah, check that out. If you have CBS all access or maybe it's on YouTube, I don't know. Uh, try it, but they've, I guess I got the HD version or the streaming it because it looks pretty good. Love it. So my next pick is Castlevania. Now I kind of blew my load a little bit about this on the <laughs> shooting the flames this month. And I, I actually went into like several different scenes um, about that with like the whole using like piles of bodies floating in the air as weapons and uh, the, the conversation with the demons and stuff. But this is an adult cartoon, very adult, mature nudity, language, horrible gore and violence, things that I have never seen in gore. It's written by Warren Ellis, who I'm actually a fan of from, you know, comics and graphic novels. That He did a really cool, he did some really, really cool stuff with things like The Authority and um, uh, Planetary and things like that that you probably never heard of. But they're super amazing uh, works. But Castlevania has three seasons uh, on Netflix. So, and they're doing a fourth. So it's got some amazing voice talent, including James Callis from Battlestar Galactica and um, uh, Richard Armitage from like the Hobbit series and stuff. How long are each episode? Like 30 minutes. Oh, that's what, it's easy to get through then. And the first season is like four episodes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like watching a movie. Okay. Yeah. And of course it's based off of the original video game, which I never played, but apparently you did. And Love it. But it's just blew me away with all of its just it's so dark and so expansive and uh, transportive. And it's just it's got so much deep mythology to it. It's, it's really, really, really good and just gets better and better as it zooms out more and more. So the next series I'm going to talk about is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Oh, I really want to watch this. On Netflix. So it has three seasons so far and a little mini season, I guess, like a little special. Yeah. And um, it's gotten, I, I watched the first season and I was kind of on the, on the fence. Like it had really good moments. And then I was just like, I don't know. And then I've heard it gets better and better and better. And I actually had people like reach out to me and tell me that it gets better. And that is really good. And that it starts reminding them more and more of like Buffy. So oh. that's really, really high praise considering it's, you know, higher up on my list than this. Um, 
but this is uh, definitely something that I'm going to be watching the rest of. And because it's three seasons or more, that's definitely why I included it here. Yeah. So uh, when this first came out, um, Rob and I had talked about watching it together and um, I sort of like snuck in and watched one episode or two and I came back and I was like, okay, it's really good. I think you would like this. And then we just never sat down and watched it. Yeah. Right. But <clears throat> we're getting to the point in our marriage where we're just not going to wait for the other one to watch certain TV shows. And so, I mean, well, I feel like it has a hard time nailing its tone, you know, like it's, it's almost like the original, you can tell how it, it, it's kind of referencing the sitcom a little bit with like this light and airy teenage thing. And this is just the world they live in yeah but then it comes out you know they're all satan worshipers and then some really dark shit happens where she's floating and like ripping people's hearts out of their bodies so it's like really weird (laughs) but i I, i'm told that it gets much more like you know grounded in its own story as it goes forward so and i've heard that the the latest series has like musical moments in in it like and so i mean like really if i were going to have a box like a checklist of things that i want in a tv show i think that this one pretty I mean, it has all of it right i really need yeah. to sit down and watch this because i've heard from people that i know who say like you would love this sit down and watch it and i don't know why i was dragging my feet i mean because i'm certainly not waiting for rob at this point but uh i mean i i don't know I think well, sometimes yeah. I'm so reluctant to even start a TV series because it takes mm-hmm. me weeks and weeks to finish it. Like I'm not a I'm not a binger really. So, but um, yo, know, this is a very binge friendly yeah. <laughs> list that I'm making. Mm-hmm. It's kind of designed for people that want to binge and like really get immersed in something, which is why I only really included these things that are that these net that these networks are essentially like committed to that they've proven themselves over you know season after season after season or you know you know that they're going to make more after 3 or two even two well i mean so far the things on your list sound like things that i would sit down and actually binge so i mean good choices so far so that said i'm going to contradict myself <laughs> and include penny dreadful <laughs> Which is uh, a Showtime show that is actually on Netflix now. It has three seasons, but it was so fucking incredible. Nothing like it. Elevated language. So good. I loved season one and two. Season three was a little shoddy, a little, you know, inconsistent. And then they kind of ended it. But we're getting a brand new series based on this universe coming soon. So that's why it's on this list. But it's three seasons. And of course, we're getting a brand new one that takes place a couple years later, like 10 or 20 years later or something in a different part of the world. So I just can't recommend the show enough if you haven't seen it. Now is the time. It's all on Netflix. So really check it out. The acting, the production design is just out of this world. I It's just really nothing like it. I was really sad to see it go. I was really hoping that they would you know, get all the writers for that and like take them over and do like interview the vampire series, you know, the vampire chronicles with those same writers and stuff. Cause that kind of has a similar feel to it. Right. With a lot of atmosphere that you could cut with a knife. And he's right. I mean, like this show has a lot for everybody, like some really, really funny moments. There's a lot of action and a lot of good, like drama and a lot of great horror. Like it really is a fantastic show. Yeah. It's technically like a Gothic romance, yep. you know, but it does have a lot of like really dark, stuff in it and i am looking forward to the new season right so my last uh on this list at least is uh dark it's the german language uh kind of horror drama sci-fi horror drama that is on netflix has two seasons and they are about to release the third season i believe so don't let the fact that it's german language stop you for those of us you know that like you know reading subtitles and are okay with that uh this is definitely definitely worth it if you do not speak german so please check it out it's hard to describe it's almost like donnie darko but more adults like with adults and it takes place over three different timelines which is kind of all happening at once because time travel is a big part of this and um one is post post apocalyptic and one is like actually it's like four timelines i think there's like one in the 20s and the and like it's like every 33 years or something and so it takes place uh and all of that and so it's uh it's really really interesting because it takes place in one town and and all of these families and so you kind of get to know the grandmother or the the great grandmother in this situation and like who their children were or even if they happen to be a time traveler some of them get displaced as children so they might grow up 
you know, in like the 2000s, but then get transported and just have to live out their lives in like the 50s, you know, or something. So it's, it's really, really interesting. It takes a lot to kind of pay attention to what's going on. So in a way, I'm actually glad there's subtitles because I can actually like read people's names and like <laughs> figure it out and keep track of it. Um, but it's incredibly well done as far as the production value and the music and the acting. Um, everything's just really, really well put together. So definitely check out Dark if you've been on the fence. Check it out. And you've been talking about this for the last couple of years since it came out, right? Like you were yeah. a fan from the mm-hmm. get-go. Just, I have been, yeah. Do you have any runners up? Well, I have a special mention, and that's Mindhunter on Netflix. Um, and it has two wonderful fucking seasons, but it's on indefinite hold. Yeah, that's sad. That's really sad. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Maybe just because it didn't draw enough people or something, but it has some of the best performances and storylines, you know, that I've I've seen. And it's a psychological thriller, you know, a crime drama, just like you know, Silence of the Lambs would be or something. You know, it, it really drew me in, and I believe it drew you in as well. You really loved the second season. Yeah, I really loved the first season and and the second really. But I'm hoping that they pick that up, that back up. It's not canceled it's just as far as i know the thing on the wiki just says indefinite hold right now so yeah the, i mean the first season was was great you know and I'm a, I'm a true crime fan right and he really like hit the nail on the head with this one it was fantastic and then you know i was sort of you know expecting the second season to not be quite as good and i put it off and it wasn't until you recommended on a shooting the flame that i was like okay let me sit down and watch it and that second season is so good <laughs> it's just so yeah. good and when i saw the news that it was on definite hold i'm like that's that's sad but the thing is, is that Fincher is making his next movie for Netflix. So I think that he put everything off on hold to do this. And I, well, he has a lot of history with Netflix. Yeah. He did uh, House of Cards mm-hmm. and he he has done the next thing I'm actually going to talk about. Oh, well, what is that? Love, Death and Robots. Ah, yes. So I have these picks that are only one season. So they're if you're not a binger and you just want something really quick and easy, you know, love death and robots is kind of an anthology. And I actually did not include any other anthologies on this list for that reason. I wanted something that you could latch on to kind of deep dive into. So I didn't include things like creep show or twilight zone or black mirror. Right. Um, even though if that's what you want, they're out there and they're highly recommended, but love death and robots is an anthology series on Netflix. That was just so amazing. They got different, uh, cartoonists and cartoon houses and studios to come out and do like each episode and some of uh, like half of it's straight up horror, you know? Uh, and it's just there. It's really amazingly done. Every episode is good. So I highly, highly recommend it. It's super accessible and quick. So definitely check that out. They are definitely coming out with a second season. So hurry up. And if you're someone like me who doesn't really care for a lot of like animation, right? And I like Chris told me we started watching this and it's good. And he wanted to show it to me and my husband. We were over there and I don't think he expected me to to like it really, maybe. But um, it's good. It's really good. (laughs) I mean, from somebody who doesn't like that sort of thing very often, I mean, it was. But we do, though. Like every time we sit down to watch. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Which is actually like level. But both of us just like, uh, yeah, we kind of turn our nose up. You know, our knee jerk on animations is to like run away screaming. But for some reason, every time we (laughs) we watch them, they have to be heavily, heavily vetted first. Mm -hmm. And finally, when we watch them, we usually love them so and this is no exception it was really good i mean and that's that's a really good thing to say at this point i mean like you know guys we're we're all stuck in the house right now you know and as we should be you know stay safe and keep yourself at home and the thing is you can try any of these things on our list and if you don't like it you know it's you just turn it off and move on to the next thing or whatever but don't be afraid to try something outside of your wheelhouse or you know maybe something you just never heard of before that we're just now talking about you know give things a shot that's how you find new directors new actors new styles of filmmaking or even like subgenres of things that you never knew that you Mm -hmm. would like before so and I was shocked that David Venture was kind of behind this I didn't know that actually until you just said it (laughs) (laughs) You reacted just the same way last time I told you that, too. Oh, shit. See? Yeah. I also drink a lot during my self-isolation and before, so I forget things. <laughs> so. But I do have two more that are just one season, including The Haunting of Hill House. Yes. Which is also coming out with the second season. It's also kind of an anthology. Uh, but the whole season is, of course, kind of like American Horror Story, where it's one theme, you know. So The Haunting of Hill House was amazing. It's the best horror, I think on TV and years as far as just like a straight haunted, you know, house story. But 
you know, I'm also, if you don't want to be stuck in a house and watching people stuck in a house, don't watch it, save it for later, but it's definitely really good. And, and of course, show run and directed by some, one of our favorite directors. So, you know, who just ended up doing one of our favorite movies of the year, which was of course, um, Dr. Sleep, Dr. Sleep. Yes. So I almost put one of his movies on my list too, because he's got a movie called Hush on Netflix that is just so, so good. I so haven't seen it. I need to. It's it's amazing. Like it was hard to make that list. What else you got? One more? So the last one that's only one season is of course the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. And I can't recommend this enough. If you like the Dark Crystal movie uh back in the eighties. Definitely check this out because I could not have asked for a better series based off of that movie. So a lot of a lot of love and care and attention um, and artistry went into this series. So definitely check it out if you can get past the puppetry, which is just the best you've ever seen. It does get dark and horror-y. There's some nightmare fuel in this one in some instances, but um, it's definitely so, so worth it. So I would definitely check it out and it gets better and better to the end. It was good. I liked it a it's lot. It's very exposition heavy, but did you ever finish it? No, I didn't finish it, but I no. <laughs> It's like, you didn't make it to the nightmare feel yet. But the, the first several episodes were, were really good. Like, I was super impressed by it. Seriously, yeah. I want more people to watch it because, like, they, they haven't even announced the second season. They're all open to it, but it's so expensive to make. You know, everything is in camera. Mm-hmm. You know, all of the landscapes and, like, all of the, the puppets and everything – so it's just amazing. Anyway, so of course I didn't also include some obvious series um, like Supernatural, Vampire Diaries, True Blood. I feel like a lot of people have seen those. They're a little bit more recent and they're kind of obvious. Um, but I just wanted to actually just at least mention those mm-hmm. uh, along with those anthologies that I that I mentioned like Creepshow and Twilight Zone and Black Mirror. But I do have a question for you just to do our a little bit of due diligence for series what non-horror series are you watching right now? So, well, here lately, I have been going back to just, like, tried and true things that I love, right? Simpsons? I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I do that anyway. Like I, they, like, I will sit down and just watch movie after movie, and then I, you know, feel sort of spent, and I want to watch something that I find comforting or that I've seen many times before. And so, like, uh, here lately, I've been watching things like American Dad, right? Mm-hmm. Which I love quite a bit. But if I am ever in a bad place and I just need to like take the time, you know, I will just sit down and watch the golden girls a lot. <laughs> so I've been watching a lot of the golden girls right now. Cause it makes me happy. Nice. <laughs> so. Well, I have been watching better call Saul, which is the spinoff of breaking bad and breaking bad was a wonderful show in my opinion. Um, and better call Saul is just as good, if not better. Most critics are saying it's actually better. Oh, which is almost an impossible feat. You know, no one believed in that show when it was coming out based on the shadow it was in and the shoes it had to fill, but it's an amazing show. Um, and I just, I just love it. I have, I have to, I watch it as soon as it comes out. The net, the, the latest episode, I just have to like run to the television and just watch it as soon as I can. And of course, uh, lately I have also been catching up on Shit's Creek. Yes. So I have just gotten through in like the last, I don't know, week, basically every single episode that I can get my hands on. And it is just so good. Uh, is the best show I've ever watched where I hate every fucking character. <laughs> See, and I, you're not the only person who has said that. So I love Shit's Creek. Like I, I watched it. I think I, I watched it this year for the first time because some friends of mine were watching it and now other friends have seen it and they're like, I just don't really care for all of them, but I really like all these people. You know, I don't, I don't know why they have moments, but yeah. I, you know, it took me a while. Cause I was just like, why am I still watching this? I hate every single character, <laughs> you know, but they, that's the whole point. It's like the opposite of breaking bad, right? They start off as really fucking shallow, bad people. And you see them like slowly grow into whole entire, like working humans you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's also got, and I don't think you're there in this series yet. You, you're kind of flirting with it, but it's got one of the best, you know, queer romances I've ever seen on TV ever easily. Oh, you're talking and, about David and, um, yeah. Patrick. Yeah. David and Patrick. And it just gets so good. And it's just one of the, 
I think it's one of the better representations of it. Oh, I have and to agree. It was just really romantic and super worth it and funny, you know, and it's it's uh, great. And it's almost more realistic a relationship that I'm used to seeing because they're a little bit more average, I guess, <laughs> you know. And uh, it's uh, it was just really, really a pleasure seeing that kind of bloom in the like the fifth season. The, um, the especially show was, the end of the fifth season. The show was just fucking delightful. I mean, like, really. I mean, there's so many good, like, comedic moments. And, I mean, even from the beginning, you know, uh, relationship or not, it's a it's a queer-friendly kind of show, you know? And I just, I really, really enjoyed it. And it's quotable and fun, and it's just fantastic, you know? And yeah. So, I mean, like, I watch a lot of, like, queer TV, things like, like RuPaul's Drag Race and things like that, um, but... <laughs> Shit's Creek is really where it's at. Like, it's just a really good show. <laughs> and of course, my favorite, you know, character is Moira Rose, who's basically like Karen Walker from Will and Grace, but like more realistic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> but she's got so many one liners and such an elevated way of speaking. Her vocabulary is just so fake and forced. <laughs> <laughs> just like her accent. <laughs> you know? What word did you and text me today? Like- <laughs> what did you say? Oh, Robert, we don't have time for petty fogging. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's so good. What a talented and gifted actress she is. I mean, Catherine like, O'Hara. Really, yeah. yes. Beetlejuice and everything else she's been in. Home Alone and... Out of the family, and I think that I'm best in al- show. alone in this. I really like Alexis a lot, <laughs> and I don't know why, but I just I think she's my favorite. But my favorite character out of the entire show is Stevie. I really just love Stevie. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. she's like... Janine Garofalo and yeah, she's just like, I don't know, voice of reason in the show or something like that. I just like her <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, we digress. And guys, remember that every show and movie that we mentioned is going to be in the show notes. So you don't have to re-listen to all this. You can just look at our show notes and look at everything that we recommended. And Hopefully I'll put in the, God, so many links, so many links to do, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and put the links into all this. If you don't see them, it's because I tuckered out, but I will put the list in for everything that we mentioned. Um, so I reached out onto social media and just asked some people, you know, what are, what are you guys streaming? Or I asked anybody to, to comment. Right. And so we've gotten a whole bunch of things. So just, um, you know, for shits and giggles, uh, movie geek and proud. So they watched the hunt. Right. And they're watching things like Emperor's New Groove on Disney Plus. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, at Itza Mario has started watching the Friday the 13th series. So. Okay. And um, Intergalactic Q said that he's watching a, a anthology show on Amazon Prime called Socio, which I've never heard of. So I'm adding things to my list from listeners. And that yeah. means that, you know, comment on this episode too. Let us know what you guys are streaming on, you know, your, your time at home and give us some recommendations of your own. And if you watch any of these TV series or movies that we've recommended to you, we definitely want to know what you think about them. Well, guys, I think that just about wraps up our um, suggestions for you guys to stream during this this time at home. Uh, we definitely want to know what you think about these choices. And if you watch them, please let us know what you thought of them. You can do that on social media at the Film Flamers on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. Or you can email us at tiredqueens at filmflamers.com or call our hotline at 972-666-7733. Leave us a voicemail with what you thought of any of these shows or what you're streaming streaming and we'll respond to it on the air in the next shooting the flames that's right we love getting voicemails especially now since we're so socially distant yep (laughs) well listeners we appreciate all the support as always if you want even more Film Flamers comment, head over to patreon.com slash the Film Flamers. You can find all of our bonus content, hours and hours, and get access to some episodes early uh, for as little as two bucks. Later this month, we're going to be deep diving into Cabin in the Woods as well as Cabin Fever. And our Patreon episode this month is going to be sequel ideas for Cabin in the Woods. All right. Well, I think it's time for me to head off and uh, start my streaming because... You've given me a whole list of things I need to watch. So. Yeah, so I feel like you're going to like <laughs> log off and immediately go watch Beauty and the Beast on CBS All Access. I mean, I've, I've seen that before, but I'm super excited about it. I had no idea that it was so close and available to me right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shit. 
Well, everybody, please stay safe. Stay inside. Take care of yourself. Wash your fucking hands. And until the next episode, sweet dreams. I really did like that Beauty and the Beast show. It was just so good. I barely remember it, but I was just kind of blown away by that pilot. You can sort of like track everything that I like in life to who who I am today. Like <laughs> horror adjacent, melodrama, like costumes and makeup, whatever. I love. Set design? Yeah, shit, of course. Of course. God, yeah. I'm watching that thing and I was like, oh my God, it's every <laughs> Obviously it was more formative than I thought it was. I'm like under like, I think a lot of people like it. Uncovering know. my my inner psyche. <laughs> <laughs> it's so melodramatic. It's so amazing. I was just like going into convulsions because my body didn't know whether to, like I said, roll my eyes back into my head as far as they would go or just like swoon all over myself. Please, you know I'm crying in every episode. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel what she's feeling. <laughs> Yep, I'm going to watch that right fucking now.